In the name of the one holy and life-giving God. Amen. Please be seated. This morning, I brought with me an icon. It has a picture that you might be seeing a lot of over the next few weeks as we enter the holiday season. As you can see, this icon depicts the birth of Jesus, or shortly thereafter. It's a very comforting and reassuring scene. You have baby Jesus, Mary, and Joseph bathed in a heavenly light. It's a very serene, peaceful looking picture. You see there are some animals, you have the wise men over here, and some shepherds over here. I'm not sure about you, but I love to look at pictures like this one. And the reminder that Jesus became flesh and blood just like you and me. How easy it is to get caught up in such pictures and to stay there. Today we celebrate Christ the King Sunday. Christ the King Sunday reminds us that this baby grows up. This baby grows up to be the king of the world. Here in the United States, we are kind of skeptical of kings and those in positions of power and authority. After all, we threw that out with all the tea in the harbor, right? When we think of kings, we tend to think of someone all powerful sitting on this grand throne who is just kind of waiting to zap us when we do something wrong. That is not the kind of king that we remember and celebrate today. This king comes as one of us to show us God's love, God's mercy, God's compassion for you and for me. This is a king who is on our side. This is a king who loves us so much that he came into the world as a baby. Reformer Martin Luther said that God came into the world as a baby because babies are not threatening or scary. Babies are attraction magnets. Right, ladies? If there's a baby in the room, we just automatically zoom in on the baby, right? Martin Luther said that is exactly why God came to us as a baby. So we'd have that instant attraction and love for God. The season of Advent starts next week. Before we get to Advent and Christmas in that beautiful scene of a baby, we're also reminded that Jesus is our King. 
That is why he came into the world. So from that standpoint, Advent is kind of double-facing. It looks back to an historical event which took place over 2,000 years ago, but it also looks forward in anticipation for Jesus' coming again. That was a big issue in the early church. There were some who, as they saw that Jesus was not coming again, they expected Jesus to come back very soon, they began to get complacent. They began not to do anything and kind of sat on their hands watching everything go by. When you're expecting a child, that's not the way things happen, right? There's a lot of preparation that needs to be done. Jesus tells us that that same kind of preparation needs to happen as we wait for his coming again. Last week we discussed that watchful waiting. So with the baby, you take classes to prepare for the birth of the baby. You learn the breathing techniques. There's a room to get ready. So that involves picking out paint color, maybe a theme. Is it gonna be a zoo or Noah's Ark? There's a lot that goes on, right? So, as followers of Jesus, how are you and I to be getting ready for Jesus to come again? We have a good foundation as Episcopalians in the baptismal covenant that kind of tells us how to live in this in-between time of the now of Jesus' birth and the not yet of his coming. The baptismal covenant tells us that you and I are to be engaged in worship, in fellowship, in the breaking of the bread, but we're also to be active in the world, treating those we encounter day in and day out as if they are Jesus himself, treating everyone regardless of race, class, religion, socioeconomic status, as if they are Jesus, giving them the respect and dignity that belongs to them as a fellow brother or sister in Christ. We are also supposed to put our hands and our feet at work in the world to make that little patch where we are a better place in the world. St. Mark's does a really good job of that with the canteen ministry and with the child ministry. Those are wonderful ways in which we can share the love of God in the world and be at work while you and I wait for Jesus to come again. As Advent nears, there'll be many, many opportunities to put your faith into action in the world. I pray that you and I will open our hearts and open our minds so that as we prepare our homes for the celebration of Jesus, our lives would overflow with love's 
God's love. And that when people see us, God's love would shine through us, just like the light shines through our beautiful stained glass windows. And as we do so, our lives will be bearing witness to Jesus, our King. And as I said last week, not only will we be building up God's kingdom in the future, but we'll be building up God's kingdom right here, right now, in Chenegal Bridge and Greater Binghamton. And our lives will show not only are we truly thankful with our hearts and our lives, but the, we are ready to welcome the Christ child. Amen.